As a documentary maker, you could wait a lifetime to happen upon a story as unusual and as extraordinary as this one. Here we go, rolling, rolling, rolling. Take one. Action. A 13-year-old boy from San Antonio, Texas, goes missing without a trace. It's nice to meet you, Nick. The thought of what somebody could have done to him, it gives you nightmares. Three years later, his family are contacted by the authorities and told that their son and brother has turned up in a children's home in Spain. And the family and the FBI and the State Department kind of spring into action and go to get him. And when they go to Spain, their missing loved one is different. He has dark eyes, not blue eyes. He has dark hair, not blonde hair. He speaks with a thick French accent, not a Texan twang. What? No one would be wrong about something like that. We didn't need to prove who he was. We knew who he was. All is not quite as it seems. Wait a minute. Maybe he was not Nicholas Barclay. You're going to finally tell me who you are. F him. Rolling, rolling. Action tumbleweed. Immediately, I started wondering about what kind of a human being would perpetrate a crime like that. And then, of course, you know, what kind of a family would be capable of falling victim to a crime such as that, of failing to recognize that that was their missing child. When Bart first told me about the story, as a filmmaker, you get these kind of two reactions. One is, can that really be true? But on the other hand, there's this kind of growing sense of excitement because you realize that these kind of events and the potential for this kind of film really don't come along that often. You immediately start to think, this deserves to be on the big screen. So why didn't we make this as a scripted drama instead of a doc? So much about it felt like you were reading the synopsis of a screenplay or a, or a work of fiction. And in movie land, anything can happen. What I learned very fast was to be convincing. But of course, this really did happen. This story is so unusual and so extraordinary, but it is real. And that truth felt incredibly important to preserve. And I sort of feel like it would always work better as a documentary because you need to see those people and you need to look them in the eye. You need to try and understand what happened. Go. This is one of the most compelling, striking stories you'll ever hear. I would hope that you as an audience member are in a similar position to figure out what happened as I am. But I also would say that I don't think that that is what the film is about entirely. You know, the film possibly yeah. isn't about what happened to that missing boy. Actually, it's about not only deception, but self-deception. The way in which we choose to believe what we need to believe or to convince ourselves of a version of the truth that maybe suits us better than reality. It changed so much. It, it was like mind boggling. But then I realized he'd been through all this horrendous stuff, so he's absolutely gonna be different. How could I be so stupid? I mean, seriously. She just could not say it's not Nicholas. Did she believe it or not? Not for a second did she believe I was her brother. She decided I was gonna be her brother. I think it's a documentary that's unlike anything you would have seen before. A documentary that will take you to places you wouldn't expect to go, and visually and structurally it feels like a work of cinema rather than a traditional documentary. Something was being hidden and I didn't know what that was. Something happened inside that house to that boy. It's like I woke up in a place where I lie is even bigger than what I did. It's a story that if it wasn't true, you would never believe it.